If there's one asteroid almost anyone can name, it's this asteroid right here. The asteroid known as Apophis. More specifically known as 99942. The near-Earth potentially hazardous asteroid, roughly around 400 meters across, that became the most important rock in space everyone talked about back in 2004 and 2005, because the observations back then suggested that in 2029 it might hit planet Earth, potentially causing quite a lot of destruction somewhere on the planet. But the actual chance of collision was only about 2.7%. Nevertheless, for the time being, it became the most hazardous asteroid known to us and a lot of different scientists started to investigate it and trying to find out if we could maybe redirect it if something were to happen. On top of this, the scientists discovered that in 2029, during this passage that you see right here, it's actually going to enter a so-called gravitational keyhole that's approximately 800 meters across, that at least in theory would put this asteroid on a direct collision in 2036 with almost 100% chance. With certain other studies we discussed on the channel that you can find in the description below, also suggesting some other potential future dates, with the collision being extremely likely. And just a fun fact, in 2029, when it's actually passing this close to planet Earth, roughly around 30,000 kilometers away from it, it's actually going to be visible with the naked eye to people located in certain regions of Europe and Africa. So expect a lot of astronomical tourists to come and observe this passage. But anyway, the most recent study that we discussed approximately a year ago discovered that it's actually not going to collide with planet Earth for several hundred years, almost certainly. With the extremely precise radar images from the Goldstone Observatory, determining its exact orbit for at least a hundred years, and causing this asteroid to lose its hazardous status. But it's still going to pass close to planet Earth in 2029. And it's still a pretty interesting asteroid, and is an asteroid that we would love to study in more detail. Now, previously China has hinted on a potential mission to this asteroid that might be planned in the next few years, although it's not really clear if this is actually going to happen. But just a few days ago from when I'm making this video, NASA made a pretty important announcement extending eight separate NASA missions. Most of them were actually Martian missions, specifically Mars Odyssey, Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, MAVEN, Curiosity, and the InSight Lander, but also the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, which has been orbiting the Moon since 2008, the New Horizons probe that visited Pluto in 2015 and is slowly moving away from us, and by the way, we've talked about New Horizons very recently with some of the new discoveries somewhere right there or in the description below, but more importantly for this video, extending the mission known as OSIRIS-REx. The mission that visited asteroid known as Bano that was filmed right here, the asteroid that sort of looks like this, and retrieved a sample from its surface by doing this very interesting maneuver, with all eight missions being extended for three years and receiving all the necessary funding. And technically for this mission, it was supposed to return the samples in 2023, and after this maybe just fly around doing nothing. Mostly because the primary purpose of the mission was the collection of the asteroid samples from Bennu. But the team behind the mission decided to make a proposition and extend it, renaming the mission in the process. The previous name, OSIRIS-REx, is now going to change to OSIRIS-APEX, Apophis Explorer, with a new profile now involving two things. First, obviously returning to planet Earth and dropping off the capsule with all of the samples, with the samples eventually being retrieved somewhere on Earth, but then the retrieval capsule itself is going to go in a different direction. It's going to try to intercept Apophis, assuming an orbit around Apophis very likely in 2029 and studying this rock for approximately 18 months, and possibly around the same time as the rock passes right here very close to planet Earth. But unlike in the previous part, it's not going to be collecting the samples mostly because there's no way for them to be returned anymore. But it's still going to be performing this maneuver you see right here in order to essentially disturb the upper surface of the asteroid just so that the scientists can kind of sneak a peek at what's underneath. This is mostly going to be done in order to learn the material properties of the asteroid and it's essentially done by approaching the surface of the asteroid and then firing the thrusters causing a lot of the material to start to come out from the surface and in essence being captured by this part, but there's probably not going to be the capture part, just the material flying away. 
but the details of the maneuver and when exactly all of this is going to happen, and of course how this is going to happen, is still being worked out. There's definitely enough fuel though, and there's definitely a way to approach Apophis and even assume an orbit around it when it approaches planet Earth by using current understanding of orbital dynamics. And that's because the orbit of OSIRIS-REx compared to the orbit of Apophis around the planet is similar enough that the scientists can discover certain points in the orbit where just a little bit of fuel can insert the craft on an intercept with the asteroid, and by using a little bit of fuel to slow down then, they can assume an orbit around it. And funnily enough, if China actually decides to send something there as well, this could be one of those missions that might have two separate probes orbiting a single asteroid which would be in theory also a great way for both NASA and the Chinese Space Agency to maybe finally collaborate on something. For example, maybe the Chinese Space Agency could do the retrieval part after the OSIRIS Apex does this maneuver that releases all of the materials. But that's of course maybe wishing a little bit too much. It all depends on what happens in China in 2029. But in terms of the main scientific purpose for this mission, it's really to try to understand how some asteroids and why some asteroids seem to differ so much. For example, Apophis in this case seems to be relatively similar in size to Bennu. Bennu is maybe a little bit bigger and also seems to be a little bit more spherical. But both asteroids differ in their spectral type. In other words, they look different. Bennu is what's known as a carbonaceous chondrite or B-type asteroid, whereas Apophis is what's known as an S-type asteroid or just chondrite meteorite. And so seeing the surface, the samples, and of course the subsurface elements of both asteroids might actually help scientists to figure out how these asteroids differ, how they were produced in the early solar system, and how all of this relates to the formation of various objects in the solar system as well, potentially discovering some secrets in the process. But I guess for now that's sort of all we know. I mean, officially, looks like we're going to Apophis after all, possibly even more than once, assuming of course China joins in. And it looks like, in a few years from now, we're going to have a much better picture of Apophis than what we have right now. Although technically the best picture is right here, based on the radar observations from the Goldstone. And also, looks like officially, eight of the NASA's quite important missions got their three-year extension, allowing the scientists to do more incredible science on Mars, around the Moon, in the outskirts of the solar system, and possibly asteroid Apophis. But that's it for now. Once we learn more, I'll follow this up with another video. Until then, check out the relevant links in the description below, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining your channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.